Welcome back at 643 this morning, a live look at the Capitol where the government whistleblower is set to testify in front of the House and Energy Commerce Committee today. Dr. Rick Bright claims the Trump administration ignored his early warnings to prevent high cases of coronavirus. And now he says the winter will come with more infections and deaths if the same mistakes are made and a clear prevention plan is not in place. Last month, the director of the CDC made a similar prediction, saying hospitals could see even more and be more overwhelmed with the flu and coronavirus hitting at once. Other doctors say the virus may never go away. So let's check in again with Dr. Dana Hawkinson this morning. We want to hear your thoughts on those predictions, the warnings about the future of this virus. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I think most of us here at the health system agree with that. We are certainly preparing now that we've had some weeks of, of initial surge, get our supply chains back in order. I think it's certainly um, plausible and most likely that as we do get into the fall and winter months of known influenza and other respiratory viral season, that this will just complicate that. COVID-19 will certainly um, be superimposed upon that. It, it probably won't go away and it certainly could add to even more uh, morbidity and mortality, meaning more disease and death. Uh, because even if we do get um, co-infections with both of those viruses, we know that can occur. Um, we haven't really seen this virus in the, in the midst, in the middle of, a, of an influenza season, but certainly if both of those viruses are circulating, it, it, yes, it could be very, very dangerous. Hmm. And doctor, we're starting to see stay at home orders begin to lift. And as businesses are opening up, doctors are warning the public not to hit them all at once, meaning don't mm -hmm. go out in one day and do all of your errands and go yeah. to several places because mm -hmm. then you're more likely to become infected. Is that I mean, I guess that makes sense. Can you talk to us about about beginning to leave the house a little bit and what we should do? Yeah, um, you know, I need to leave the house, too. I had to cut my own hair this weekend. So <laughs> hopefully in the next two or three weeks, I can get out to um, to a, a hairstylist. Uh, but yeah, so anytime you leave your house or you leave your bubble, you are going to increase your risk for infection. Uh, there's no denying that. We know that it's out in the community. As more people get to leave, we know that the chance of the infection spreading is going to be greater. So there are things that you can do to mitigate your risk. Um, number one, don't go out if you're ill. Please have um, some thoughts about other people. And if you are having symptoms or ill, do not go out. If you do need to go out, just go out for essential things. Like you said, also, if you need to go out, go to maybe one or two places. Don't, don't keep doing everything and increasing your risk. Also, wear a mask. And please, hopefully, there will be other people um, who are in those places as well wearing a mask. And that's really to protect other people from yourself. Um, it can also add a little bit of protection, but mostly it's to protect other people from yourself just in case you have the disease and don't yet know it or have symptoms. The other things that are vitally important is wash your hands frequently and use either uh, soap and water or alcohol gel. Do not touch your face. Uh, you know, we know that the mask is, is somewhat of a burden and it can be itchy and scratchy. It's the uh, allergy season. You can have itching your eyes. Do not do that when you're out in public. Um, if you do go to places, please either use um, alcohol sanitizer or wash your hands when you're leaving those places. Or if you can keep a mm. bottle in the car, use it as soon as you get into the car if you really have to do that. And if you can avoid uh, touching your face when you're out in public after you've touched other common uh, touch surfaces and do those things that I just talked about, you are gonna significantly reduce your risk of getting um, COVID-19. I think as the weather starts to warm up a little bit, we've been in this cold snap the last week or so, but as the weather starts to warm up, obviously people are going to be out and be outside. That being outside doesn't mitigate the, the risk as much as people think it does. We still need to maintain, even if we're, say, sitting outside on a patio or sitting in the park having a picnic, we still need to be six to ten feet apart from other people, right? Yeah, absolutely. If those people are not in your household um, or, or not um, really in your bubble that you know of um, or have been around, you know, it's important to maintain the physical distancing as well. You know, as you said, certainly inside and in closed spaces, that's going to be a little more difficult. But outside, you can do that. And that doesn't fully mitigate the risk. But if you can maintain six to 10 feet away from other people who are not in your household, um, that will great, greatly reduce your risk of getting COVID-19 as well. We have to adhere 
to this guidance. Um, if we continue to do that as a society, we can open up more safely, get the economy back, get our supply chain back for our food, um, for our products that we need to buy every day at the store. So I think that's very important to know. Dr. Dana Hawkinson from KU Health. Dr. Hawkinson, I don't know what it's going to be like when you're not joining us every Tuesday and Thursday to answer all of our questions. And when that happens, that may be a good thing, but we'll miss you. Thank you for all your help right. this morning. We appreciate it. Thank you.